We're looking at portraits of the Lord Jesus Christ in numbers. My name is Robert DeCora and happy to share the notes created by Dr. Rich Constanza. We're reaching out to Native Americans, lifting up Jesus who bore our sins. Jesus said that the brass serpent on the pole is a portrait of his crucifixion. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When Israel sinned, the fiery serpents, signifying the pain that they were in when the snakes bit them, and people began dying, and God said to Moses, Create a brazen serpent. That is my way of showing them their rebellious sin. And what had created the judgment now was put on a pole, lifted up for them to look by faith. This is God's salvation. If they chose not to look, they'd die. Repent. Look. Live. And so it's the same with Jesus. The cross became the symbol of judgment. Our sins on him. And we're encouraged, look or die. Look and live. And so Jesus is our Savior. Both of them showing the coming of the Savior and what he's done for us. Portraits of the Lord Jesus, the rock from which God sent water to quench the thirst of the Israelites, is a portrait of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, the Red Sea, and did all eat of the same spiritual meat, and did all drink of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, 1 Corinthians 10. Let Jesus satisfy your spiritual thirst. Don't look to other sources for spiritual satisfaction. Failing to trust God prevents growth and progress in your life. God led the Israelites to where the promised land was very near. Yet they failed to believe God could bring them into the land. Five things that have brought down many men of God. Food, ask Adam. Pride, ask Satan. Money, ask Judas. High tastes, ask Gesaias. Women, ask Samson. What will take you down? What will build you up? The opinion of the majority, even the majority of God's people, is not always the opinion of God. Ten out of twelve spies brought back an unfavorable report, and the Israelites believed the majority. You need to realize that truth is never determined by majority vote. Believe the word of God, no matter how many people choose not to. Determine to live in obedience to God, even if very few others do. Have you noticed the radical shift in society as they're trying to make everything that's good evil and everything that's evil good? Stand for God and righteousness because he will stand before him, not Washington on Judgment Day. Don't let anger cause you to sin. Moses had every right to be furious with the Israelites for their repeated complaining. But in his anger, Moses hit the rock instead of speaking to it as God had commanded. You need to practice Ephesians 4.26. Be ye angry and sin not. There are things that will appropriately make you angry. Don't let your legitimate anger cause you to sin. God is bigger than any giant you might face. The Israelites feared the giants who inhabited Canaan. They forgot that the all-powerful God who created and rules the universe was with them. Don't compare your difficulties with your own strength. 
Instead, trust God for whom nothing is impossible. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis 18.14 No matter what you're facing, God is there for you. Be sure your sin will find you out. Numbers 32.23 Don't try to hide your sin from God. You can't. The ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord and he ponders all of his goings. Proverbs 5, 21. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Proverbs 15, verse 3. So make sure you're living for the Lord so you can be blessed instead of being a mess. All the resources, the videos for the survey of Numbers and Numbers Timeless Truths, as well as the Student Guide, Leader's Guide, PowerPoints, and a video of the class that was taught can be found on Right Now Media. You see the QR code. Go there. Now, these additional charts, key events in the wilderness wanderings, you're welcome to go ahead and pause in order to see what happened and where it happened. These are additional resources you can look at. And finally, we have here uh, where in the Old Testament primeval period, the patriarchs, Egypt, and now we see them in the wilderness. Here are additional resources, Amazing Timeline, which is Circular Timeline, and then Family Tree video from Jesus to Adam. And these are the additional uh, videos you encourage to reach, uh, view for each book of the Old Testament. NativeMI.org, Robert at gmail.com.